What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is the 2023 Nissan Z. So about the next generation, brand new Z here. Well, first off, I gotta say I love the styling. I love how they went with this retro modern kind of approach to the styling, heavily influenced by the 240Z up front here. So you see the headlights, which aren't exactly round, but kind of have a, you know, more of an oval motif to them here, just to kind of give you that retro vibe, but still obviously looking very modern and cool. And uh, I just love even the front nose there that is actually reminiscent of the 240 as well with the rectangular grill there and uh, I know that grill has been a little bit divisive but they said that that grill was necessary to feed the air that this uh, engine needs here now that it has twin turbos on it and stuff they had to open up that grill area compared to a 370 and so that's why you have that big mouth there but honestly I think it looks really good considering you know the historical context of the 240 having a similar thing and also just the way it flows in with the rest of the vehicle here I think it's really cool I like the little uh, detailing you have there in the grill as well and everything just is very nicely integrated coming down to uh, the sides here i really love the silhouette and the side profile here with a nice long hood which by the way the hood has a couple little ridges in it almost like a power dome kind of thing but very very mild and muted but uh, a very cool little touch there but i mean otherwise on the sides here you know you have a, the roof line that really kind of comes up to a point here right at the top of the a pillar and then nicely slopes down there and you see the cool z badge there which also throws back to the 240s with that little uh, medallion on the c pillar and a nice little chrome strip there to break it up as well you also have on the performance trim here these raised 19 inch forged wheels and uh, they look really nice i like how they're kind of a gunmetal kind of look to them and have some metallic flake in them as well and look really nice they're not just flat black or something like that you also can get gold wheels on the very rare proto trim if you'd like and if you go to a base sport trim those have 18 inch wheels um, but these 19s look really sweet you also get uh, narrower tires on the sport this is running 255s in the front and 275s in the rear. It'll be 245 all around on the base trim. Also, I really love these door handles. You know, it's a very reminiscent of past Zs, which also had a similar type of styling to them. Um, but this one's a little more flush, a little more uh, low profile, and just looks really cool here and kind of gives us almost a concept car vibe on the side with those handles. And then going out to the back there, you'll see those 300ZX inspired taillights. And I love that they did that. And I love that they weren't afraid to blend, you know, one style with another. I also love how here on the performance trim you do have a little bit of a sportier exhaust setup. It's a sport tuned exhaust and you can see how the, you have the nice detailing there on the tips of it. And uh, just the rear under spoiler there is also a nice touch. And also the spoiler you get on the deck lid there is part of this performance trim. But overall, I think they just did a really good job. And I also love that they're offering this in exciting colors. You can get it in like that yellow color. You can get it in a bright red, this bright blue. You know, some really fun, bold colors, which is what you want in a sports car as well. You want to stand out and, you know, having a great color palette really helps with that as well. And so overall, I just think this thing is a 10 out of 10 in the looks department. The interior of the Z is is also nicely modernized here while retaining some of the classic elements that uh, people probably really enjoy about Z's. So first off, sitting down in these seats, so this is the performance trim that we're in here. So you have these leather and suede seats here. And so very similar to the old 370 seats, I think. Um, they feel pretty similar to me, uh, even has this little cutout here in the middle like they used to have. Um, their power adjustment here, only on this performance trim, if you go for a base trim, it's manual. But the only power part is the forward and backward and the uh, seat back here. Um, they're also heated seats, and they're pretty comfortable though. The bolstering is really nice, and even me being a little bit of a smaller guy here, uh, it holds me in pretty nicely, and uh, just feel nice and snug like you want a sports car to be. Next is the steering wheel here in the Z, which is great. So for the uh, performance trim here, it says it has a premium uh, leather steering wheel. I guess it's a non-premium leather in the regular uh, sport trim. But anyway, it's a great steering wheel. I love the design of it. Uh, just a few buttons here on the front of it, but it has a great nine and three grip, nice little 10 and two notches. And uh, I also really love, they actually have the little notches on the back of the wheel, which is something you used to get on stuff like in the 90s. They say it was inspired by the R32 Skyline, actually, and that those owners really love those steering wheels. And so I'm not sure how much that adds as far as a usability standpoint, but it just is a very cool little touch. And honestly, this is the first steering wheel I've seen in probably 20 years that has the little notches on the back of it. And so I really just love that. I also like the design here with the little spoke at the bottom and just a really nice steering wheel. The gauges here in the ZR 
are fantastic. They did a wonderful job with these gauges. So it's a fully digital display here. It's nice and big too. It's a 12 inch screen, I believe. And uh, I just love, this is the sport uh, view that you're seeing here. And I mean, they gave you all kinds of great info with that tack front and center, having the shift light there at the top, and then having uh, the option for a boost gauge, G meter, you know, having all that stuff there is really nice. But then I also love how you have all those other gauges, which you can't configure, but they're always just there on the right hand side. So, I mean, you have all that stuff you see there way more than you get on most other even performance vehicles, honestly, to have all those different temperatures. And so great to have all that information there, you know, front and center, basically. And uh, if you don't want all that sporty information, though, you can have it set up to be a little bit more normal with the normal or the enhanced views. And in those views, you'll have the typical stuff of it showing you your trip information, you know, the radio station that's playing, your navigation instructions. It'll even actually show you a little bit of a map view there, depending on where you're at. So that's a nice little touch and, you know, all the usual stuff there. You can change your safety settings, all that stuff. So nice to have those as well, but honestly, anyone buying one of these, I feel like you're always going to want to stay in that sport view because it just looks so much cooler and is just really awesome to look at. Coming over to the center, though, that's not all the gauges. You also have these three gauges up top here. So you have a boost gauge, you have a turbo speed gauge, which seems a little redundant with the boost gauge, but just a fun extra gauge to have. And they also have a volt uh, meter there as well. And so great to have those. It would have been cool to see those be digital and have those be able to be changed uh, to different things if you'd like. But honestly, I love having you know, a little bit of analog gauges still here in this car. And so great to have those there. And again, you have the boost gauge also in the digital cluster as well. So you don't have to look over to the middle there, but it's just kind of fun to have for decoration. And then coming down, you have the nine inch touchscreen infotainment system here. But this nine inch screen only comes on the performance trim. If you go for the base sport trim, it's the eight inch touchscreen, which is very similar, same kind of menus and stuff. Still has a volume and tune knob, just like how this one does, really nice. Um, the only difference is I believe that's wired in CarPlay with the eight inch screen i believe the nine inch screen here has wireless apple carplay um, but still wired in android auto for some reason so that's the only minor little change there. having the wireless uh, smartphone integration though is certainly going to be nice to have but otherwise you know it's just your normal nissan head unit so it has you know just the easy to tune radio stations i really like this head unit it's pretty simple not overly complicated the only thing is you know the maps are still pretty low res kind of dated for a 2023 model year vehicle but you know how many people use the actual in-car nav anymore so i don't think it's a huge deal honestly and so for the basic stuff you're going to do with it i think it's going to be totally fine for everyone and it's also nice to have the hard button shortcuts here right beneath the screen as well uh, but one interesting touch is beneath that you'll see that you have your uh, climate controls here which is a, a automatic climate control it's not dual zone i mean a car this small is not a big deal but um it's kind of interesting that there is no display and so it still is just this little controller for you know roughly what temperature you want it to be at and um, you know just it's kind of basic controls I, they seem very similar to like what you got on the 370z honestly but this is a sports car again no one's going to really care uh, but just one little thing that was interesting to note there but other touches that are really nice so you have like padding by your knee here which is actually a substantially thick pad here so it actually feels comfortable to rest your knee on which is nice because some of the others even like the supra has a little bit of padding but it's a lot firmer than this so this is actually gonna be a little bit more comfortable if you're resting your leg on there if you're a little bit of a taller driver on long drives or something you know it is nice that you're gonna have that you also have some suede here on the doors um, although that is only on the performance trim nice to have some little touches here and there you also have you know the shifter here which is uh, just a nice leather and all feels pretty good and uh, the only thing it doesn't feel great honestly is the center armrest so it is padded and you know is nice in that regard but it's pretty loose and it's really that and right around the heated seat controls are the only two places where it actually feels cheap in here otherwise I think it actually does a pretty good job of feeling pretty nice in here and well worth the price tag so this isn't a vehicle where you're just paying for the performance or anything um, the other little thing to mention is storage space here in the Z so you have a little pockets here in the doors with a bottle holder it's not super deep but you could probably fit a small bottle in there and then in the middle here you do have a nice deep cubby to fit your smartphone and my iPhone 13 Pro fits in there with room to spare so really nice and it's rubberized as well so uh, great that you have you know that to keep it in place you also see a USB jack and a USB-C jack in there so great they give you the option with both of those and then you have a cup holder here and then they add one big thing here for the new Z is a second cup holder because you previously just had one so now you have the second one here by sliding back this armrest and uh, so great that you have that and then you open up this armrest and uh, it's very shallow I mean you know you see a power let in there and you can fit, you know, a cable or two, and that's going to be about it. Um, and that continues on to the uh, cargo space here in the back of the Z, which is also pretty limited. I believe they said it's about 6.9 cubic feet of space. 
it's very shallow. Um, obviously, you know, the hatch is nice. So, I mean, you can stack some stuff a little bit, but you don't have a ton of clearance. So, I mean, my backpack, when it's at the back of that trunk there, it basically is the uh, same width as that uh, cargo space. So, not a lot of width there. And uh, beneath the floor, you're not going to see anything aside from the Bose uh, subwoofer you have here, which is part of this uh, upgraded stereo. And then a can of fix a flat, and that's it back there. So, I would say that this cargo space is roughly the same size as the Supra's, um, maybe a tiny bit smaller. I think it just might not be as uh, deep as the Supra's space, but they're both pretty close with not being super practical, but, you know, nice to have the hatchback uh, space nonetheless, uh, but it's certainly going to be a lot smaller than like a C7 Corvette or something like that. You also do have these little bins behind the uh, front seats here, and those are nice to have, you know, and on the passenger side there it even opens up so you can store like your, uh, you know, owner's manual or something in there, but they're also very shallow, so only good for, you know, fitting a few little smaller items in there or a coat or something like that but nice to have a little bit of extra space there nonetheless. Two other little things I want to mention though about the performance trim here versus the base sport trim is that you have the nice metal pedals here on the performance trim. You won't get those. You just get rubber pedals on the sport. Um, and then also the stereo. So like I mentioned briefly, you know, it has this Bose eight speaker stereo here on the performance trim with the nine inch screen. You'll go to the eight inch touchscreen, which has a six speaker stereo, which isn't Bose branded um, for those uh, sport trims. So a little bit of a downgrade there as far as speaker count and, you know, probably the sound quality. But let's start up and go for a drive. The Z here just has the normal Nissan key and the same small little key they've used for a long time. Would have been nice to see maybe a Z badge up here instead or something, but I just love the fact that it's a small key and it is of course keyless access, keyless entry and push button start here as standard in both uh, the base trim and the performance trim here, which is really nice. So you just leave the key in your pocket, hit the end and start button and it starts right up. All right, so setting off here in the 2023 Nissan Z. So lots of stuff to take in here. I think the first thing that I noticed actually hopping in this car is that I'm sitting up higher than I was expecting to. And I have the seat as low as it'll go and I'm only 5'9 and I feel like I'm kind of sitting up a little high. It almost reminds me of like my Mustang's driving position and a lot less like the Supra or the GR86 where you sit a lot lower. This definitely has a little bit of a higher seating position. So, you know, it's just a little less sporty than I was expecting honestly, but because of that you have excellent visibility you have a great view up over the hood there, uh, nice thin A-pillars, great view out of the sides, view out of the back is also really good, and even with that thick C-pillar, because of how far up that rear glass comes, you can actually see around it pretty well. You also do have blind spot monitoring and stuff like that to help you out, and I feel like I can see out a lot better than in the Supra, for example, um, and so that's definitely appreciated. Other things to note here about this car, so um, I'm also kind of surprised at just how quiet it is. Um, you know, I've just been cruising around, I did a little bit of high driving for a few minutes and then just cruising around here at some slower speeds um, you know the engine you hear it a little bit but it is not very loud and there is no real sport mode there's a sport mode for the transmission which does the auto rev matching but there is no you know active exhaust there is no adaptive dampers nothing that can really be adjusted and so as a result you know there's no way to make this exhaust louder aside from going to the aftermarket and um, I mean, it has a nice little growl to it, but honestly, I wish there was more noise. Uh, the only noise that I am getting that I'm kind of wishing I didn't have as much of is road noise. It could be the roads around here outside of Vegas, uh, the way they're paved or something, uh, but there's an elevated amount of road noise. I'm doing about 40 miles per hour right now, and it's okay on this road, but earlier on the highway and stuff, I mean, it's, it's pretty loud. It actually seems like it's a little bit more road noise than I actually had in the BRZ uh, that I just had for a week. But some stuff I really like about the new Z here so far is steering is wonderfully weighted, has uh, just a very natural feeling to it. I love this steering wheel too. It just feels really good to use. Uh, throttle response is also really immediate. Just a tiny bit of a tip in before you start getting response. And, but I mean, it's very direct and the boost, you know, comes on nice and early. And so, you know, it just feels like it's really nice and strong. Brakes also feel really good. This is the performance trim I'm driving, by the way. So you get the bigger brakes on these. And so that certainly uh, helps accentuate that feeling. But uh, just really natural and again, very easy to use the brakes. The shifter also is an interesting thing. So I have the auto rev matching on. Um, and the shifter, 
uh, is a little rubbery. It's not quite as slick shifting, um, but it does feel really good. It's very similar feeling to a 370Z shifter. They did say they improved it though and made some refinements to it um, for the feel and you know just allowing it to just be a little bit better. I do really like this shift knob. It feels really great and uh, the throw is also a little longer than you might be expecting. It's not quite as long as GR86 for example, but um, you know it definitely feels like you could have a shorter uh, throw in here even if you want it from the aftermarket. The shifter is also hooked up to an Exedi clutch. Uh, it's a higher performing clutch pack here obviously for the higher power of this car over the 370 and so um, I'm happy to report though nice and you know fairly light feeling clutch uh, just enough weight again everything they've kind of dialed in very nicely from a feeling standpoint so it all feels appropriate nothing feels too heavy or too light it all just feels just right but the moment you've all been waiting for let's turn down onto this back road here and see how it does and here we go wow really throws you in the back of your seat <laughs> <laughs> it pulls really well and the uh, trash control is lighting up there so it wanted to break those tires free and uh, ooh, yeah wow whenever you uh, get up over I'd say you know like four grand that's when it really and over five it really starts to pick up and <laughs> wow that's where it pulls nicely and I got some more sound there up at these higher rpms so it's starting to sound better. <laughs> this thing is a rocket. It flies. Wow. Very, very impressive. And also the performance one here does have a sport muffler, so it is going to be a little bit louder than the base one. Um, but anyway, so the spec. So it's the three liter twin turbo V6, same motor as the Q60 Red Sport and the Q50 Red Sport 400, but they did uh, make some changes to it. So it has better throttle response now, uh, thanks to the recirculating valve and uh, a couple of other tweaks they made to it. And so, still 400 horsepower, 350 pound feet of torque. I mean, huge leaps over the 370Z. And um, it's it shows, I mean, this thing, <laughs> yeah, this thing is, way, way faster than the 370s for sure, obviously. Um, and 0 to 60, by the way, uh, was, I think, I didn't see any official quoted time, but it's gonna be under five seconds here with the manual and, uh, you know, probably in the mid to low fours if you have that automatic. But um, they also have launch control here with the manual and the automatics. It's really great you can get it here with the manual as well. Um, although, I don't see any easy way to turn it on. I, there's no launch control button, um, so I'm gonna have to figure out how, how to actually do launch control here. Um, but, man, this thing though, it pulls so strong. So, you get peak torque from 1600 RPM and it'll pull all the way through into the, you know, the mid-range there and then peak horsepower comes on at 6400 RPMs uh, before it's red line, right around 7000. And so, oh man, this thing though, it pulls really strong. So obviously it's a little hard to compare the power delivery to the Supra because the Supra is uh, up until about a couple of days ago was available with just the automatic transmission. And that's an eight speed auto, so a lot closer for the gear spacing. So, you know, I'm gonna have to wait till I drive the manual Supra to truly compare how they feel back to back. What I can say is, I mean, this thing, it really, they did a good job with the gearing as well to make it so that it doesn't feel like it's too, you know, slow or anything. They made it pretty short for the gearing here. So we'll see how second gear, see where it tops out at here. So top, yeah, second gear is like 65 miles per hour is for, is where you're gonna be topping out there. So I mean, that means you can do a zero to 60 run there in second gear, which is great, but. <laughs> And then third is going to be well above uh, legal limits here, so I'm not going to be able to find the top of third here uh, in normal uh, driving circumstances. But um, a third gear is really a champ. I mean, this thing pulls hard. And also, I like how the suspension moves around. I mean, you know, that nose really lifts up nicely, and the back end squats down, and it just... It really is an exciting feeling, and I mean, yeah, 400 horsepower in a car that's, you know, as small and, you know, as light as this is, you know, it's going to feel exciting, but I mean, this is like way more excitement than the Q60 Reservoir, in my opinion, at least. So we don't have any tight corners to go on just yet here, um, but what I can say also as far as handling is it does feel nice and tight. I do feel like there's a tiny bit of a lean to it. It definitely doesn't feel as hunkered down as the Supra or the GR86 or something like that, uh, but compared to like a Mustang or something like that, you know, this definitely feels a little tighter than those and obviously a little bit smaller than a Mustang. Um, 
but it, yeah, it feels really good. By the way, though, if you are curious, curb weight is uh, just over 3,500 pounds. It's like 35, 36. So it's roughly about 100 pounds or so heavier than the 370Z. Most of that goes into the fact that you have, you know, all the turbo stuff. You have two turbos. You have the intercoolers. You have all the extra cooling needed for this motor, which is higher performing in general than the 370 motor. And so as a result, you know, you're going to have some of that weight gain. But they made sure that, you know, the weight distribution is still really good. And they also went to great lengths to keep the weight down in other areas as well because they said it could have been several hundred pounds heavier if they you know were just to drop in this engine and let it be but still as it sits this is about 200 pounds heavier than a comparable supra as well if you compare the automatic versus the automatic um so you know you're gonna feel that extra weight and like i said because they're sitting up higher and stuff this definitely in corners i don't think is going to feel as sporty as the supra i do appreciate the tight steering though it is really nice and tight and I'm very happy that you know they set everything up even though there is no adjustability for any of this stuff really I'm just very happy they set everything up very well so that I don't feel like I need any adjustability either which is great um, also you know you have good grip you have 255 wide tires in the front 275s in the rear here and they're uh, Bridgestone 007s here for the uh, performance trim if you were to go for the sport trim you go down to 245 wide tires all around with the same amount of horsepower which if you want the squirrely uh, Z out there definitely go for that base trim um, it's gonna be interesting uh, with those they also have smaller brakes on that sport trim as well and they also don't even have the limited slip diff which by the way in this is now a mechanical limited slip diff instead of the viscous limited slip you used to have in the 370 so I think that base one's gonna be a lot hairier to drive unfortunately I'm not gonna be able to test out the sport version today yeah, just accelerating there as I was making that turn. This thing wants to kick the back end out so badly. It is so funny. Wow. And I mean, yeah, I have everything turned on, by the way. There is just a simple little trash control off button here you can uh, hit if you want to, you know, have it be a little more squirrely. And maybe I'll try that out here in a minute. Um, but anyway, the brakes, getting back to that. So the performance trim here, they're 14 inch rotors in the front, 13.8 inch rotors in the rear. And that's a big uh, upgrade over the Sport because the Sport are like 12.8 inch rotors in the front. So a good bit smaller. They're also four piston floating calipers in the front here uh, versus two piston calipers in the front of the sport there uh, that are uh, fixed instead of floating and um, they also go down you have two piston uh, calipers in the rear here on the performance only one piston on the sport so if you're gonna be doing any kind of track driving I would definitely suggest going for the performance trim you know for the braking capabilities and things like that um, as well as the LSD and all the other things I mean they really decontented the sport so that you know it's great for somebody who wants 400 horsepower um, um, for the price tag of 40 grand, which is you know the, the big headline thing here, but um, you know you do lose out on a lot um, for that you know sport trim. So if you're looking for a tuner special, you want you know to do a bunch of stuff yourself and upgrade everything and switch everything out anyway, then you know maybe you're not going to miss uh, all the upgrades here of the performance version, but. I think for most enthusiasts, uh, you're going to want the performance version and, uh, you know, so you're going to have to pay a lot more if you want all these performance goodies. But yeah, now we got some tighter corners here. We can sample the handling a little bit more. And it feels good. It does feel good. I mean, you know, it definitely, yeah, I, I still, I think definitely the Super is going to be the better handler of the two here. Um, and it, you know there is a tiny bit of a wiggle to it, but it'll like settle in, and, and then it, you know it settles down and and you know hunkers down through the corner. So it feels really good. Um, you know I would say it, it does have a little bit more of a grand touring kind of vibe to it, though. Um, it's not as razor sharp as some of the other sports cars, but that's okay because you know you still have you know comfortable ride here for the most part. But on this road, you can start to hear some of that road noise as we're getting up closer to some highway speeds. You got a tire corner here. It moves around though. I'm telling you what, this car keeps you on your toes. Um, this is, they actually, in the presentation, kind of likened it to a dance partner. And I can kind of appreciate that a little bit more now that I'm driving it around corners, how it, it wants to dance around, literally. So you really do have an actual dance partner here. That's not just a, you know, a figure of speech. This thing is actually trying to dance around and you're managing it. And I love that because it 
very much makes it feel engaging. I feel like um, I definitely have to be on my toes a little bit more here in this than I did in the Supra or the BRZ OG86, where I think those cars imparted a little more confidence in the handling. This, I have a little less confidence because it feels like it wants to step out and it feels like it moves around a little bit more, but that's exciting and engaging. So it's gonna come down to your personal preference. Um, if you want something that's you know razor sharp and super buttoned down, you can have that uh, with some of the others. I think this is gonna be the, for those who do really you know want the more playful side of the handling uh, you know, component here with this. I think that's um, kind of what the vibe I'm getting here with the Z so far. A couple other improvements to the handling here is that you now have monotube shocks instead of the twin tube shocks you used to have on the 370Z. And then you also have an increased caster angle, um, which they say also helps with giving you a little bit more stability. And uh, on top of that, you know, you have a double wishbone, front suspension, independent multi-link rear. And so all those things really help to, you know, give you still very confident handling, even if it isn't, um, you know, like I said, quite as hunkered down as the Supra or a GR86 or something like that. Um, still, still feels very lively, which is what I think I really love about it the most, is just how lively and uh, how much you have to actually engage in the driving experience, which is awesome. But if you are someone who wants the lightest possible Z, the Sport Trim does drop about 50 pounds off of this, coming in just under, I think it's like 34.86 for its curb weight, so that allows you to be under 3,500 pounds there if you're okay getting rid of you know all the goodies in the performance version here. And then also, by the way, it's worth mentioning, if you were to go up to the 9-speed automatic version, um, then that will add on about 66 pounds extra for that, so that one will potentially put you, you know, about 3,600 pounds. Either way, you know, it still is lighter than a Mustang, for example, by several hundred pounds, um, which I know isn't saying much, you know, and again, this still is heavier than the Supra, heavier than GR86 and all that kind of stuff too, but, um, you know, I still think, I don't feel like the weight's really holding me back. I mean, I'd have to be on like an autocross course or I'd have to really be on a tighter road to know, but I mean, you definitely do have a little bit more lean here, uh, as you might be able to even see on camera, and, you know, you know, isn't uh, quite as uh, flat as I would like it to be, honestly. But again, there's always the aftermarket if you want to, you know, have it a little bit stiffer. But let's try an acceleration from a stop with traction control off. And uh, that also turns off the automatic emergency braking. But uh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's more than happy to give you lots of wheel spin there when you do that. <laughs> fun. So there's a little bit of a wheel hop sensation there. Supposedly even with the launch control on, uh, will allow you to do a little bit of a wheel hop kind of sensation, but they say that's actually the fastest way to uh, actually do a launch in this car. And I'm going to do an acceleration here with the windows down. <laughs> and trash control still lets me provoke the back end. <laughs> But one thing you might notice here is, so now I'm doing highway speeds, and guess what? There's no helicopter noises. There's no wind buffeting. So definitely an improvement over the Supra where that is not fun to drive with the windows down unless you modify uh, the mirrors there to get rid of that sound. But uh, in this, no modification necessary. There's no wind buffeting. So if you're someone who loves driving with the windows down, the Z is gonna be a great car for that. And one more acceleration just for good measure. raises up whenever you're flooring it is so much fun oh man so one other little thing I do want to mention is uh, some people were wondering about how does this feel at legal speeds you know is it a car that's too much horsepower you know can you have fun at legal speeds in it and I mean I would say that you know obviously it's 400 horsepower and you know the way this thing is geared I mean you're still you know second gear doesn't max out till 65 miles per hour so that kind of tells you everything you need to know as far as you know, if you want to do a zero to 60 run, um, you know, you're going to go through first and second and be done. Um, so, you know, that's a very common problem with many other vehicles these days. Um, so, you know, in that regard, you know, yeah, you can't run through the gears a bunch like you could in something like a Miata or a GR86, for example. Um, but, you know, I think that it still is fun at legal speeds just because of the boatload of torque. I mean, that full torque coming on at 1600 RPMs means anytime you're loafing around, you just stomp on it. I mean, you know, you can just do those quick little spurts, but I mean, that nose lifts up still, and it really, I mean, that full boost comes on and really starts to sling you forward. I mean, it's, I feel like I'm, whenever I floor this thing and then that boost comes on full blast, it feels like what it looks like in a Fast and Furious movie when they hit the nostril, like, whoa, like, 
<laughs> that's kind of how this feels. It really plants you in the back of your seat very strongly. And so in that aspect, it's a lot more fun than the GR86 or something like that. And also more fun in my opinion, than even the Supra, you know, as far as, you know, just holding onto one gear and just having it surge forward. The Supra is very intense and crazy, but it's also shifting a bunch while it's doing that because of that eight-speed automatic, and that's how it's so insanely fast. It's ripping off those shifts super fast with the super short gearing and stuff. Um, so this, you know, is a little bit of a different uh, speed sensation, but it's a very uh, kind of a little bit more old school of a sensation and uh, just still so much fun and so you know I mean yeah you know a car like this 400 horsepower it's gonna be tough to fully exploit on the streets anyway um, but you know it's just as much fun as you know Mustang GT on the streets or something like that which has you know even more power um, same kind of deal here in this in my opinion um, also we can lean on these brakes really strong brakes I really, the more and more I push this engine, the more and more I really do love it. Even though I still have zero out of the exhaust, basically, I really do love that induction note. And the way this motor sounds is really nice. I still would, you know, love to see an active exhaust on this or some kind of option for that. As it is, it sounds really, really sweet. So I kind of recant my previous complaints. You know, if you're going slow, you know, it would be nice to have a little bit more sound, but you know, whenever you're uh, getting on it, at least you do have good amount of volume and a good amount of excitement there from the uh, audio department. And this road right now is a little bit bumpier and uh, still the ride quality is really nice. You know, it's not overly stiff. I'd say the ride quality is certainly better than the Supra, uh, a little bit more comfortable than that, and probably even a tiny bit more comfortable than the GR86 and the BRZ, um, but not quite as comfortable as a Mustang. So kind of, again, the happy medium, kind of where the Z's falling with everything, with power, with pricing, with, uh, you know, everything. It seems like the ride quality is just the same, where it's kind of in between, uh, you know, the harder edge stuff uh, from Toyota and the uh, softer, you know, muscle cars and stuff like that. But it's a really nice thing. I think it'd be great to daily drive, great to go on a long road trip, and even because you know it does have, uh, you know, a nice, good amount of visibility, good ride quality. I'd say I would certainly pick this for a long drive over a Supra, you know, just because of those comfort things. One other sound that I'm noticing is you actually have a little bit of gear whine. I notice it most in fourth gear, right around 3,000 RPMs. You're cruising like 50 miles per hour. Not sure if you can hear that or not, but just very interesting. And now out on the highway here in the Z, uh, it's a really nice highway cruiser. Like I said, you have a little bit of road noise here. Um, but one really nice thing I appreciate is that you have adaptive cruise control here on the manual Z still, which is something a lot of manual transmission cars don't offer adaptive cruise. Uh, but this one does. Obviously, it won't do the low speed stuff, but at least as far as, you know, the normal highway speed cruising, uh, you know, you have the full blown adaptive cruise control, which is great. And and so uh, other than that, you know, you have blast spot monitoring and uh, your cross traffic alert, all the typical safety stuff you'd expect. And it all seems to be standard, by the way. So if you go for that base sport trim, I don't think you lose any of the safety tech. So that's one nice thing they still do include with the sport versions. Um, and uh, yeah, just out on the highway here, yeah, it's just a nice cruiser. Like I said, the ride being a little bit softer than the Supra certainly is nice. And uh, yeah, just a really nice thing to cruise around in. And now the road's gotten smoother. So here's what a nice, smooth highway uh, would sound like. But the last two things I really mentioned here are the fuel economy and the pricing of the Z. So first off, fuel economy, these are rated for the manual at 18 in the city, 24 on the highway, and 20 combined. You know, if you're buying one of these, you probably don't really care too much about fuel economy, um, you know, but it is worth noting that that is, you know, based like the same kind of fuel economy you're going to be getting in a Mustang GT or something with its V8. So it's not fantastic, but it's a twin turbo V6, what do you expect? If you are looking for the best fuel economy out of a Z, you can go for the automatic. That gets about four better on the highway and I think two better combined. Obviously having those nine gears really help you on the highway to, uh, you know, give you more range and much better fuel economy there. So that's going to be the way to go if you are someone who's worried about fuel economy. The last thing though is pricing and that is a very interesting component here of the Z. So the big headline thing here is $39,990 for that base sport trim. But if you want this performance trim, which again gives you the bigger brakes, the mechanical limit slip diff, you have no LSD in the base sport trim. I also have no auto rev matching in that sport trim. You have no launch control. You also do without this sport muffler. You do without the sport tuned suspension. You also do without these forged wheels just going down to regular alloy wheels. They're, they're 18 inches in the smaller rubber, you know, 245 wide. A lot of downgrades, you know, for that sport trim. But I was shocked at the price gap because this performance one is 
$10,000 more expensive. So if you want all the stuff that I have in this one here, um, it's going to be $49,990 uh, before destination, by the way. Destination is another $1,025. Um, so essentially, you're looking at about fifty-one dollars for this one the way that I'm driving it. Um, and of course, paint and stuff will give you maybe a few little changes. But basically, fifty-one dollars for the performance trim, forty one for the base. And, you know, it's, it, it's, so as far as the sport trim goes, you know, I think that's obviously a great value. If all you care about is I want 400 horsepower in a manual transmission, you don't care about anything else, there you go, you're set. And if you're someone who's gonna tear the car apart and do a ton of modifications yourself, you're set. Uh, but if you're someone, you know, who wants something out of the box that's gonna be comprehensive, you know, having the good brakes you expect, having the limited slip diff to put down the power well like you're expecting, um, if you want, all those improvements and the other nice stuff like the auto rev matching not a big deal but you know that is you know just all the mechanical stuff you know and i mean the forged wheels aren't cheap either i'm sure but you know if you want something that's really ready to go out of the box though you know there is no mid-grade trim it's either you go for 40 grand or 50 and so you know it's just a big leap and then you know that's the problem is you know if this were 45 or even you know upper 40s I could see a value play there but then whenever you, know, you compare this to the Supra which is essentially the same price um, you know I mean obviously you can get a Supra a couple grand more I think depending on the options you put on it um, but you know whenever you get up to fi over fifty thousand dollars for this you know I still feel like the Supra handles better you also have a BMW interior essentially in the Supra versus the Nissan interior I mean like I said they did improve this interior but it's not as high quality as the one in the Supra and you have uh, you know technically less horsepower in the Supra but you know that motor has been very underrated and so I think that you know as far as zero to 60 times go the Supra is going to be faster most likely and also you know as far as the weight thing I was talking about earlier you know that Supra is 200 pounds lighter so I feel like the Supra is still more dynamic as far as a sports car goes but I think this is a better Grand Tour so if you're not looking for the utmost performance I would say you know you can go for the Z if you want something that's just gonna be a nice Grand Tour that's also sporty fun having the stick but that's not even exclusive anymore either now that Supra is gonna have a, a manual uh, in all the 3.0 versions here for 2023 um, you know that kind of edge has been lost it just comes down to what you want if you want the sportiest thing possible I'd still say super is the way to go if you want something a little more comfortable for your daily drive better visibility all that I would say the Z would be the way to go in that regard but I still think also the beer Z and the Gear 86 are also a ton of fun obviously much less horsepower no turbos but they're also a ton of fun again coming in 10 grand less than even that bare bones a uh, sport Z and uh, you know those BRZs and Gear 86s still have a limited slip differential still have you know the good performance hardware still even at that $30,000 price point so I don't think the Z is quite as crazy of a bargain as it originally appeared uh, especially now that we know you know 51 grand here for the performance trim but I still think it is a good value I still love that there's competition here that you know the Supra has something else to compete with it that isn't you know a muscle car or you know something more expensive like the C8 Corvettes I appreciate that this is here I think it's great to have another option I'm glad the Z has continued on and continued on with a you know gas engine and a manual transmission um, you know these days all this stuff is really hard to come by so just the fact this car exists is awesome regardless of the price but then adding in the price I do think it's competitive it just comes down to you know what you prefer as far as setup but um yeah overall still a lot to like here about the new Z and uh, it's fantastic now they they did say I believe you know they're uh, gonna be limited availability hard to get especially here in 2022 and they're not gonna be on sale till this summer um, so uh, you know it's gonna be a little bit of a wait, wait for most people before they're able to actually get one um, but whenever you do get your hands on one I think that most people will be pretty impressed with this I think it's definitely so much better than the 370 and um, just an absolute blast to drive. But anyway, that's all of my thoughts here on the 2023Z. Let me know your thoughts on it in the comments below. Huge thanks to Nissan for providing me here with this opportunity to review the Z for you guys. And yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.